Welcome back to another episode of Strife's Talking Points. With all the drama going on in the world today, it is just so amazing that I didn't see this or that I haven't seen this anywhere else because, of course, we're dealing with the current state of the apocalypse, the Vox apocalypse, where Carlos Meza has decided to destroy YouTube as a company by basically setting up a series of attacks against another YouTuber and all YouTube as well. But this is real specific. This is the New York Times opinion piece, Articles Impeachment Against Donald J. Trump, a draft. This is the New York Times opinion piece, Brian uh, Ian, I can't say the middle name, Philbrick, uh, editorial staff of the opinion section, dated June 5th today, 2019. Uh, calls for Mr. President's impeachment are getting louder since the release of the Mueller report. White House stonewalling of congressional subpoenas and Mueller's first public comments. In Mueller's first comments, remember he said he could not prove the president innocent. There was no evidence of a crime, but he clearly couldn't prove the president innocent. And that is where all the current calls come from, because if you're in the U.S., you are guilty until proven innocent. No, wait, that's upside down. You're innocent until proven guilty. And we only have, to my knowledge, this is the main case that I've ever seen that. If Democrats do move to impeach Mr. Trump, the articles impeachment drafted against past presidents will provide a guide to them. The Constitution leaves high crimes and misdemeanors, the term that describes impeachment offenses, offense, impeachable offenses vague, notes the historian Tiffany Timothy, a co-writer of a recent book on impeachment. So if you're going to do your constitutional duty as an elected member of Congress, how do you define high crimes and misdemeanors? One of the best ways is looking at past practice. Now, I pulled this up a little while ago. It may be tiny if you're just listening. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through this with you. Um, there's actually just a very simple three-page uh, article they've got here. Uh, Russian government engaged in sophisticated campaign to influence the 2016 presidential election. Don't know if you know this, Donald Trump was not president or in power during the 2016 election. That would have fallen to Barack Obama. On May 17th, 2017, a special counsel was appointed to investigate Russian interference, including any links or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the Trump campaign. The special counsel was also given the authority to investigate and prosecute federal crimes committed in the course of and with intent to interfere with the special counsel's investigation, such as perjury, obstruction of justice, destruction of evidence, intimidation of witnesses, subsequent thereto, Donald J. Trump, using the powers of high office, engaged personally and through his close subordinates and agents in the course of conduct or plan designed to delay, impede, and obstruct the investigation of such Russian contacts and potential obstruction of justice, to cover up, conceal, and protect those responsible, and to conceal the existence and scope under of other unlawful covert activities. Now, the Mueller investigation has been released. The redactions, specifically that the stuff Congress can't see because it is illegal, and unlawful for Congress to see things of grand jury testimony and grand jury ongoing grand jury investigations. They legally can't see them. And they bring that up uh, in here that they should be able to see them even though it's illegal to release them to them, which then they could pursue this because he did something illegal by releasing the information. Now, because there's been no evidence of links or collusion between the campaign and the Russian government, they are now moving to obstruction. They, they, meaning the Democrats, are moving on to an obstruction case where he covered up no crime being committed and he was upset that a crime not being committed got him investigated and has basically uh, loomed over his entire presidency and continues to, even after uh, there was no evidence of a crime. Uh, as Robert Mueller said, there was no evidence to link the crime, but he was unable to prove innocence of the president in the 
collusion case, which is not how American law works or how investigations work. You do not have to prove your innocence. That's one of the founding principles of the United States and of many uh, liberal democracies, as is you are innocent until proven guilty. But under um, congressional law, uh, high crimes and misdemeanors wouldn't actually need any basis in criminal activity or any type of misbehavior as long as Congress moved forward with what they considered misdemeanors. Now, uh, the second part of this, that the means used to implement this course of conduct or plan include one or more of the following, withholding relevant and material evidence or information from lawfully authorized investigative employees of the United States, including congressional committees. Now, the congressional committees are now subpoenaing uh, requesting information from the Mueller report, which is a redacted grand jury testimony that they are legally not allowed to have. It is illegal to give them the information, uh, which is why they were redacted in the first place. If you receive a 400 page report and 8% of that report is missing, 32 pages of grand jury testimony, ongoing stuff, you're not legally allowed to see that. However, that is not the problem here. The problem is they can't see everything so they can release all the information publicly, which will, I don't know, I don't know what it would do. I don't know it, how anything could be any stranger in politics right now. Approving, conducting, acquiescing in, and encouraging witnesses with respect to the, with respect to the giving of false or misleading statements to lawfully authorized investigative officers and employees of the United States or false or misleading testimony in duty duly instituted judicial and congressional proceedings to my knowledge none of that has happened the stuff that they can't be told they can't be told because of legality and i think that's mostly going after Barr for summarizing the Mueller report and Mueller saying that yes the summary is uh, correct however i disagree with the nothing he really didn't disagree with anything he just said a lot of double negatives where he couldn't prove innocence but that's actually not what law does he said he couldn't prosecute the president but if there's no crime legally there's no prosecution if there's no evidence of a crime then there's no all they know is that russians interfered in the election uh, and that's it most of the crime criminal proceedings should move towards facebook twitter youtube the actual social media groups that were doing that sorry i'm off on a tangent Interfering or endeavoring to interfere with the conduct of investigations by the Department of Justice of the United States, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Office of Special Counsel, and Congressional Committees. Don't believe any of that's happened. They're endeavoring to misuse the Department of Justice and Agency of the United States. Again, don't know if that's happened. Uh, making or causing to be made false or misleading public statements for the purpose of deceiving the people of the United States into believing that though a that a thorough and complete investigation has been conducted with respect to allegations of misconduct on the part of personnel of the executive branch of the United States and the person personnel of the Trump 2016 campaign and that there was no involvement of such personnel in no involvement of such personnel in such misconduct or endeavoring to cause prospective defendants and individuals duly tied and con see, convicted to expect favor, favored treatment and consideration in return for their silence or false testimony, or rewarding individuals for the silence or false testimony, or endeavoring to intimidate individuals who offered testimony. In all of this, Donald J. Trump has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as president and sub subversive of the constitutional government to the great prejudice of the cause of law and justice and to the manifest injury of the people of the United States. Wherefore, Donald J. Trump, by whom by such conduct warrants impeachment and trial and removal from office. That is the main page there uh, where they're, uh, unfortunately, if they try and do any of this through legal means, 
um, it's very difficult because there have been no charges brought against the president or even any linking of president to false statements. I believe the false statements refers to his uh, now um, D, D, whatever, his lawyer he used to have who was basically kind of the uh, strong man who did a lot of uh, dirty stuff for Trump during his uh, previous work who Trump said, you know, he the in Congress he couldn't even say that he was told to lie because he wasn't told to lie and that was his that was one of the things he was brought up on charges with and um, I cannot think of his name that's terrible um, next part using the powers of the president of the United States Donald J Trump in violation of his constitutional oath faithfully to execute the office of president of the United States and of the best of his ability preserve protect and defend the constitution of the United States and in disregard of his constitutional duty to take care of the law be faithfully executed and he re has repeatedly engaged in conduct impairing the due and proper administration of justice and the conduct of lawful inquiries or contravening the laws governing agencies and of the executive branch and the purpose of these agencies. This conduct has included one or more of the following. He misused the Department of Justice and other executive personnel by directing or authorizing such agencies or personnel to conduct investigations uh, for purposes unrelated to national security, the enforcement of laws, or any other lawful function of his office. I would like to see citations of that uh, somewhere in reality, because I don't believe I've seen any of that stuff where he's had um, anything like that happen. Part two, he has failed to take care of the laws were faithfully, he has failed to take care that the laws were faithfully executed by failing to act when he knew or had reason to know that his close subordinates endeavored to impede and frustrate law inquiries by duly constituted execution judicial and legislative entities concerning Russian interference in the 2016 election and the cover up thereof. Most of the information that I've seen about the Rusta, Russia investigation was released by the Trump campaign members. Everyone from Jared to um, Trump Jr., uh, everyone related to that, they've released all the information, and I don't know that any of that was held up and the cover up there up. If there is no cooperation and collusion between the Russian government and the Trump campaign, there is no cover-up, which is kind of what the Mueller report found, is there was no collusion, and therefore a cover-up did not exist. It was mostly just the president being upset about being investigated over something that he knew, felt, thought didn't actually happen. Part 3. In disregard of rule of law, he knowingly misused the executive power by interfering with agencies of the executive branch, including the Department of Justice, in violation of his duty to take care of the laws be faithfully executed. Ooh, I don't know what they're referring to there. Um, I'm assuming that's firing of Comey, who up until Trump fired, up until the Trump presidency, everyone wanted Comey fired. The left for what he released about Hillary Clinton weeks before the election. Um for the Republicans because, you know, the, his boss met with uh, Bill Clinton on an airport tarmac again weeks before the election and then the charges against her were uh, immediately dropped. Uh, Comey was not someone they, that was well-liked in either circle. Um, could be McCabe, who also was not well-liked and had engaged in some other activity, which got him fired as well. Uh, however, none of that impeded the... Um, investigation closest thing to impeding that was when a few people recused themselves and then they stayed out and let the investigation continue part four in all of this donald j trump has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as president and subversive of the constitutional government to the great prejudice of the cause of law and justice and the manifest injury of people of the united states again they were there's nothing 
to this. This is just the New York Times writing out where they think the um, uh, impeachment process could begin. And I have a feeling that this is going to get hit by conservative media and this is going to get ripped apart because each point of these, me not even being a conservative media person with a ton of research money, you can go through these and pick them apart. Uh, final two, final three parts real quick here. In his conduct of the office of president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, contrary to his oath faithfully to execute the office of president of the United States and to the best of his ability, preserve and protect and defend the Constitution of the United States and in violation of his constitutional duty to take care of the laws, take care that the laws be faithfully executed, lest failed with, without lawful cause or excuse to produce papers and things as directed by, by the duly authorized subpoenas issued by the Committee of Judiciary House Representative April 19th, 22nd, May 21st, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which, they're basically, that's them saying we need your, I'm sorry, you kind of break down here. That's a lot of uh, Office of Reform and House most of these I've seen before, these are the ones requesting his tax returns, requesting the information they cannot legally get. So to release that then would be unlawful. These subpoena papers and things were deemed necessary by the committee in order to resolve by direct evidence fundamental factual questions relating to the presidential direction, knowledge, or approval of actions demonstrated by other evidence to be substantiated grounds for impeachment of the president in refusing to produce these papers and these things donald j trump substituting his judgment as to what materials were necessary for inquiry and interposed the powers of the presidency against the lawful subpoenas of the house of representatives thereby assuming to himself functions and judgments necessary to exercise the sole power of impeachment vested by the Constitution in the House of Representatives. In all of this, Donald J. Trump has acted in a manner contrary to his trust as president and subverted of constitutional government to the greater prejudice of the cause of law and justice and to be manifest injury of the and to the manifest injury of the people of the United States. Wherefore, Donald J. Trump, by such conduct, warrants impeachment and trial and removal from office. So, there you have it. The article's uh, draft for impeachment related from the New York Times to the group. And I find this super interesting that they're, the New York Times is laying out what they believe the best case is. And in this article, which... I'm probably going to have to end up subscribing to the New York Times. There's just a lot of stuff in there that you can kind of go through and take apart because they are really, really riding this Trump dragon. Uh, and they've got to get that bump. They've got, they're chasing it, man. They need this um, in order to keep themselves afloat, to keep people reading. Um, in the first impeachment article against Nixon sets up the main argument as Congress. Main argument Congress would likely use against Trump. The president attempted to impede a federal investigation into his actions and those of his associates. There would, legally there would need to be proof of this, but if it goes through impeachment, there doesn't actually need to be proof. Whereas Nixon is caught on tape and a lot of testimony came out where he did that. For what's going on with Trump, Trump was upset and Trump said mean tweets, but there was no actual stopping of the uh, investigation. Like Trump, Nixon never submitted to questioning from FBI investigators, but Nixon misrepresented or lied about his involvement in the Watergate cover-up to the Justice Department officials and to his own aides. The Mueller investigation deemed Trump's written answers about Russia-related topics inadequate, not false, not misleading, not, misrepresented, not misrepresentations, but they did not accuse him of providing false information. Like Nixon, however, Trump did provide false information to potential witnesses, including his own aides. He has also refused to allow congressional committees access to relevant, relevant information, including the unredacted Mueller report and witnesses. Now, this 
is illegal. He cannot allow that to go out. It is illegal to drop this into Congress because immediately, once it's done, this will be leaked the next day to the public, and you'll then see grand jury testimony, which we're not allowed legally to give to Congress. We, we meaning the government, the Justice Department, can't give to them. So if you release it, you're breaking the law. If you don't release it, you're not breaking the law, but Congress is upset with you. Um, now, did provide false information to potential witnesses. I'm not sure what that is, but I would like to, I'm going to have to look at more on that. And go us go down just a bit here. All right. The first article impeachment passed by the Republican-controlled House against Bill Clinton was to basic, was based on testimony he gave before a federal grand jury. Because Mr. Trump refused an open interview with Mueller investigations, Mueller's investigation did not agree to provide written answers to questions. Oh, I can't read right now. I'm sorry. Because Mr. Trump refused an in-person interview with Mueller's investigation, investigators did not agree to provide written answers to questions about obstruction, and he never testified before the grand jury. This little of this first article is relevant to Mr. Trump's conduct. Now, Bill Clinton actually gave testimony to a grand jury where he lied he actually lied and we have the whole discussion of the word is trump did not do that and that is where it comes from but in any case mr trump would likely rest on obstruction of justice obstruction of justice refer they keep referring to obstruction of justice because no crime was there no underlying crime is there to be obstructing that is the thing that I don't understand. If there is no crime, there is no evidence linking anyone in the campaign to a crime, to collusion, anything other than more than a couple of people reaching out trying to do something and Trump campaign just basically ignoring it, not understanding it, and moving on. You just, the circle, they keep circling back to this. Collusion was the silver bullet going to take down the president. Collusion didn't happen. And then you have the now famous Mueller statement. Well, we couldn't prove him. We couldn't prove a crime wasn't committed. That is basically trying to prove the inverse of something in reality. If someone is killed, you can show they were killed. How do you prove someone? How do you how do you disprove it? If there's no anything there, so someone comes up missing. Well, we can't prove they weren't killed, even though they're alive and nothing happened. It is the strangest thing to me. I'm sorry, I went off. My brain just left me there. The obstruction of justice requires an underlying crime to be obstructing. Being upset you're being investigated your entire presidency because you literally receive 90% negative coverage about you your entire time and i'll be honest i'm not sure that i think trump is a very smart guy is he did he clue with the russians Mueller says no Mueller says there's no evidence of it he said there's no evidence of a crime but he can't prove the president innocent i believe is how it goes which is just the most amazing thing to me but this is basically for all of you out there in the world uh let me know what you think. I would really like some feedback on this one. Do you think that the president, even though he didn't collude, there's no evidence of it, but because he can't be proven innocent, should he be charged with obstruction of with obstruction of a non-crime in an investigation which is now being investigated because the competitive campaign paid foreign agents to create a document which was then used as part of the uh, setup which is, you know, this whole thing is insane to me and i really don't know what's going to happen when you have a president going up for impeachment for not committing a crime and the other party the democratic party just ripping at the seams because they don't know who they want to be right now anyway please like comment share subscribe feel free to dislike the video 
do what you want. I would just like to see some engagement here. Thank you all for listening or watching or whatever you're doing. But do go um, read through this yourself. See what you think. It is amazing.